Hello! Thank you for watching another episode at Investing with All I See is W. Today, I wanted to make this video on a Saturday of August 22nd of 2020 to share with you my insights on how I feel today with the biotech industry, at least for the small cap companies working on potential solutions for the COVID-19 pandemic. And what we know is within the last five weeks, we've been feeling a big headache with the tumbles of the share prices. For example, Sorrento Therapeutics hitting a resistance of like $20 and then now it's tumbled down to like 50%. With the Novio Pharmaceuticals, it previously hovered up to like mid $30 share price range and then it's tumbled down to close to midpoint range around the $15 now. iBio went up from like $2 all the way up to $7 and now it's tumbled back down to the high $1.70. So why is this all happening and what does this entail for us and what should we be doing with our investment portfolios, right? We tend to ask ourselves that all the time and anytime when share prices go up and when it goes down, we feel that big emotional impact and we start thinking in terms of, hey, what should we do? What should I do right now? I mean, I'm, I've taken a net loss. Should I sell? Well, there are ramifications, but it all depends on your investment strategy. If you feel like you can no longer take any more risk where you don't want to take any more losses, then you can commit on making the sale and taking the, the net loss. However, to me, I feel like it's sort of the game theory that you're playing when you're invested in the market and you you don't necessarily lose or win anything until you make that transaction which is going to be the capital gains so it'll be capital gains whether you close out with positive proceeds or you'll close out with a net loss and right now we haven't lost or gained anything until we formally make that transaction to sell so that will then make it realize gains or realize losses and we haven't realized anything yet because we're still in the unrealized back bracket so we're still part of the game and that's what i wanted to encourage everyone here the fact that the share prices have been hovering and the fact that we've been invested in volatile stocks hey we will have the opportunity for data points to increase up to the points where we initially purchased at the prices we got in at so Let's not fear. That's why I think in terms of, okay, if you are an existing investor where your initial share price is much higher than where it currently is price right now, if you have money, I would consider dollar cost averaging down to help bring down your total average, which will make you feel emotionally intact. Or let's say if you don't have any money at this point, try to avoid looking at the stock ticker so much think of it as you lost all those funds right let's just say move on with your life you lost all that but if you think of it like that you're going to think in terms of the worst case scenario and then when the company starts performing again that's when you're going to expect it when it's least unexpected and that's going to make you feel great because you already anticipated you losing everything already but in re reality you haven't lost a single dime. If not, you're coming back hard. So that's what I wanted to share with you. As long as you have quantity of shares in these tickers, you'll be all right. Because I feel like these companies in the COVID-19 race will continue to grow and there will be a demand for it as it hurdles through the regulatory trials process with the phase one, two, and three. And what we know is most companies haven't even gotten to like phase one clinical trials, just a handful of companies that got into phase one, for example. In the United States, we have Inovio Pharmaceuticals, Moderna, mRNA, we have Novavax, Novax, all in phase one still. We haven't heard any official phase two start yet. So it's still up in limbo right now. And it hasn't got even into phase three yet, which is the, the real deal. That's what we tend to to focus our attention on when it comes to FDA decision making if whether it's safe or effective so it's still a long way right now so that's why I feel like from a long-term perspective it's great to park your money now because to me I feel like the fact that within the last month the whole entire small cap biotech companies have dropped now is a great time to park your money or to to dollar cost down so that when 
the share price starts increasing again, you will get a higher return on investment. And that's the key difference. And you may not realize it now, but once you implement those strategies, I can almost guarantee you that the probability of getting a higher return on investment will be much higher than just going the typical route of not doing anything, of not doing dollar cost averaging down. Okay, so those are just some insights. I know it's been reckoning the, the last prior weeks and it's it's been painful, I know, but my key way of staying the course and staying emotionally intact is just just knowing that you're in the game for a long term, knowing that what you invest in should be what you will trust and respect for years on out, right? And if you pick an unlucky stock, then that's just the nature of the game. But from what we know, with companies that are well positioned and supported by Operation Warp Speed, why not invest in those companies? There's already credibility established with these companies that have innovative product characteristics that can establish itself from a competitive advantage standpoint from, let's say for example, the large scale companies. We know large scale companies like AstraZeneca, Johnson & Johnson, University of Oxford are working on potential vaccines as well. But does that mean that the quality of large scale companies will by default always be better than small cap companies? That we should not assume. So that's why I feel like we should never disregard the products that are being produced from small scale companies because small scale companies don't have the idea of economies of scale yet because they're so focused on designing a product that actually works. Now that these companies are able to demonstrate what their products can do with the demand for vaccine needs, then that just shows that these companies are more special and that they are needed in a society where there's a demand for viral need vaccine based medicine. And that's why I feel like we shouldn't panic and we should continue on investing because these companies will outright dominate in the long term because as it's researching now, all those research efforts will be leveraged to something bigger, stronger, and better in the future. So I hope that this video was to give you more of a deep dive insight from a market sentiment and a psychological point of view in terms of where these type of biotech companies are headed. For example, Inovio, Novavax, Moderna, iBio, Co-Diagnostics, Sorrento Therapeutics, Vaxart, VXRT. So companies like that, these companies are solid. I mean, just knowing that these biotech companies were even able to get onto the Operation Warp Speed, then that tells you something. And there are other companies like Regal Pharmaceuticals, Heat Biologics, TRIB, CureVac, that's coming out with innovative products as well to support with the COVID-19 pandemic. So we have a series of companies that can add value to this pandemic that, that's going on. But from an investment standpoint, you know, of course, every investor is not going to choose like every company and just invest in it. Of course, like me, I, I like choosing like my top three companies and I like just focusing on the top three companies and then just capitalizing on that. All right, so I hope that this video was valuable in that it gave you more of an uplifting insight on where we are today. But let's not assume that these biotech companies are continuing to fall because what goes down must go up. And I feel like the must go up is going to start happening sooner rather than later, especially in the upcoming weeks in September, October, November, and December. Okay, thank you so much for watching another episode at Investing with All I See is W. And if you haven't liked this video, please do click on the like. I would really appreciate it. And if you feel like this video was meaningful to you, please subscribe to my channel and support my channel so that it can continually grow because i'd love to hear your feedback and i appreciate you providing questions and comments so that i can take the information 
learn from it and be able to create dialogue with each and every one of you because I'm learning as I go and I appreciate every comment you leave and let's hope we uh, all win together moving forward. Thank you for so much for watching another episode at Investing with All I See is Dougie. Thank you.